All right, everyone. My name. I is... love the sentence. Changing <laughs> the word is hard. It's it is pretty, hard. pretty hard. That is hard. You're right. Yeah, it's definitely hard. Well, I'm uh, Derek Distonfield, and I am a partner at GSD Venture Studios, the co-founder of the company. And I'm here with uh, Guillermo, the CEO of Biosolvent. And I'm going to allow him to introduce himself and his company. And then we're going to have what I think is a very interesting uh, conversation um, that I hope uh, everyone gains from. But so Guillermo, can you first tell everyone about, you, you know what I'm going to do real quick, Guillermo, if I can, I'm going to do a quick share of a demo that you did at plug and play just because I think everyone needs to see how if you good. want, I can, I yes. can present our pitch right now. Yeah, that'd be great. Can you? Yes. I need to be able to present our screen. All can right. you yeah, let's do allow it. Allow the sharing. Now you can do it. Okay. You cannot stop screen. Just a oh. moment. Go ahead. Okay. I will share my screen. Uh, oh, perfect. So let's go. Uh, firstly, thank you, Derek, for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. Okay. Awesome. So my name is Guilherme Queiroz and I'm the founder and CEO of Biosolvit. We are a Brazilian biotech company applied to new materials development. We use it, waste materials to produce new uh, technologies to preserve the earth, the life, and the most important things in, in our planet, okay? Uh, we are talking about oil spill accidents. Almost 6 million tons of oil were spilled in the last five decades, only our seas according to IPOP. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the BioBlue Natural Absorber. Here we have two tanks, and we're putting crude oil in these two tanks in the same quantity. On the left, we, we use polyurethane to solve this accident. Polyurethane we, uh, is the best alternative for this kind of accidents, was the best alternative for this kind of accidents before us, okay? One kilogram of polyurethane absorbs 12 kilograms of oil in 30 minutes. And this is our product, the BioBlue Natural Absorber. One kilogram of our product absorbs 22 kilograms of oil in only 15 minutes. It is twice more absorbent in a half of time. See the difference after the tidal effect, okay? Uh, in the first tank, as you can see, the oil was spread on the surface. In the second tank, the oil was almost completely absorbed by the product. The most important, our product is natural, made from palm fiber discarded. Only 3% of a palm tree is used to produce the heart of palm, a knitable product. The rest of 97% was, was discarded in the crop before our company. So uh, our product is natural, twice more absorbent in a half of time. And the most important, uh, we can recover 95% of the absorbed oil. So we can recover the oil from the sea or land and put again to refine. I went to France and Total has challenged us to test our product in the Cedric Institute, the most important institute for this kind of test in the world. And that's the result. Our technology is considered as the most efficient oil absorber in the world nowadays. Some competitors from Germany, uh, United Kingdom, and United States, okay? And this is some of our product we produce. Absorption barriers, containment barriers as a complementary line, kits for industry, sports, airport, ports, mining companies, steel companies, highways, or even to small repairs, for example. And this is the reason because our market is so large, $145 billion uh, last year. And Grandview Research, Research estimates that our market size will be achieving $108 billion in 2025. Our revenues last year, $1 million, and our projections to 2023 
$85 million, okay? And uh, we have just closed our Series A here in Brazil. We have just raised $3.75 million. Uh, we were accelerated by plug and play in Silicon Valley and it was an honor for us. Uh, we uh, were the winner of Grand Prix d'Innovation in Paris, in Paris uh, and we were finalists in the Startup World Cup in 2019 in Silicon Valley too, okay? That's our uh, new factory here in Brazil and our team. I'm the founder and CEO. I am from TOTUS. TOTUS is the first Brazilian unicorn, a $4 billion company here in Brazil. Wagner is the co-founder and CRO. Our, uh, this is the man behind the innovation, Giuseppe, is our international sales director, Habib, our R&D director, and Fantini, Fantini, our industrial director, and the raw material supplier of our company, okay? Uh, we believe that this team can change the world, actually, between making money and save the world, we choose both. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Wow. So, th this is our company, and the challenge to scale this business very, very, very hard that you, uh, We'll get you into said. that in a second. Um, what, how did you come up with this idea? How did you? Uh, I was trying to create a new business, uh, plan B for my life. And I realized that um, I needed to create a factory to produce the heart of palm, okay? It was the first plan. And when I, when I saw that only 3% of a palm tree is used to produce the heart of palm, I realized that uh, it was a great opportunity to recover this waste biomass and to produce uh, a different uh, line of products, okay? Uh -huh. Wow. And sorry, Derek, I, I still have some difficulties to speak in English. You know that. No, Please forgive me if I make English, some mistakes, okay? No, you're fine. Your English is great. And it's just always, you know, so good hearing, you know, those Thank stories. Thank you. Um, you're so kind, man. <laughs> no. Um, so talk to me about that last line, which I think is very pop, uh, very inspiring about in terms of deciding to change the world and make money, you want to do both. Talk to me about the decision to, to take on both. Uh, you know, some people would just say, let's make your company a nonprofit. What would you say as, as a response to that on why you choose both? Um, because uh, I believe that the first... Um the first mission of a business is to be profitable, you know. Mm -hmm. We need to make money to honor our shareholders, uh, to keep our business alive, and to improve our business and expand around the world. I think that to be profitable is the first mission in a, in a company. But we believe that we can do this, uh, saving the planet and preserving the life and make the right things to be profitable, you know? Are there any opportunities that you have missed because you are a for-profit company? Have anyone judged you or said, I don't want to work with you, like maybe some ocean foundations or anything like that? Uh, not yet, but I think that we, it could be, it, it, it could be hap happens uh, in some situation, you know, because uh, there are many, many people that uh, that don't, how can I say, that don't, that don't know how important it is to be profitable, you mm -hmm. know? There are many people talking about sustainability without a proposal, you know? So we have a proposal to, to talk about sustainability. We need to be a company, a profitable company to save the world better 
and to save the world as as uh, better than we can, you know? I don't know if I'm saying right. Well, I want to maybe summarize, and what I'm hearing is, is by being a for-profit company, you've created a sustainable business model that yes. will keep you operating for years to come and allow you to save the ocean and spills on land for many, many decades. Is, is that yes. what you're, you're basically saying? And, and one thing that you could do in the future is you can also have a nonprofit that you form that has certain activities to, you know, help the ocean or help with the land or help with deforestation and things like that, which would allow you to have some relationships with some organizations that are precluded from only working with you know, other nonprofits. And you could always do that in the future if you wanted to. Yeah, we can do the both. We can help the, the, these, um, these organizations to, to help the planet and, the, and to, to save the world. But we need to be uh, focused on uh, staying alive to, to keep saving the world for uh, four decades. You are absolutely right, Derek. So let me ask some questions about some, some challenges because, you know, you and I were talking about it earlier, you know, changing the world is hard. And yes. Um, so one of the great things about your product is that you're getting free materials. Um, you're getting hearts of palms that you have a unique patent friendly way that we're not gonna talk about the process, but a lot of your materials comes from hearts of palms. Is, is that true? Yes, here in Brazil, we have an important industry to produce the heart of palm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody, everybody knows. Oh, but... they're, they're amazing white, almost like roots that you could put in your salad yeah. and they taste amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. You're right. And as I said, only 3% of a palm tree is used to produce this product. Okay. But you're getting it from somebody that cuts down palm trees to use it for another thing. Is that right? So right. They, have a, right. they have a palm tree. I don't want to use a bad word, but like deforestation business where they're cutting down palm trees and then they're just giving you the discarded parts for close to free. Is yeah. that? Yes. Here, here in Brazil, we have an important industry, industry to produce the heart of palm, as I said. Mm -hmm. And these uh, palm trees are cultivated, you know? We, uh -huh. uh, and these uh, producers used to usually discard the, the rest of a palm tree before our company. Okay. Got it. And how many, tr like, is there a, a, an environmental challenge? Because some people might be concerned that trees are getting cut down and then that causes, you know, um, pollution and, and issues with the environment. So how, how have you thought about that as your company continues to grow and how many trees will need to be cut down? Um, is uh, there a concern about that or? No, 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 no. because only, um, well, wait, uh, just a moment. Well, uh, our partners, our mm -hmm. partner, Fancini, yep. is, uh, he has uh, an industry to produce the heart of palm, okay? Yep. And he used it to discard five tons of uh, vegetable fibers palm fibers every day. Okay. So we use these five tons to produce, among other products, the BioBlue Natural Absorber, okay? okay. So our, uh, this industry, this factory, is one between 200 factories in the same state here in Brazil. Okay. So we have uh, a huge amount of palm fibers to use and to produce our products, okay? Okay. That's so 
as long as the hearts of palm industry is alive, you are going to have plenty of low cost, close to free materials to build your product. Is that true? Exactly. Exactly. And how does the hearts of palm industry in Brazil or the country reproduce trees so rapidly? Like, is there a growing program that those companies are participating in? Or have you thought of maybe for every sale you make, maybe you plant 20 trees to kind of offset the industry? Like, is, is there anything like that? Uh, the producers need to plant a million trees every year to keep their, uh, their factories uh, alive, you know? Uh -huh. To keep their factories producing. And we, we just help these guys to recover the biomass they, that they don't use every day. This is the point. Yeah, got it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. And then so... What about your factory that you were nice enough to show a picture of? Um, yes. How do you look at, um, you know, is it, it's obviously using electricity, which creates some pollution. And how do you look at some of the other challenges that it's creating as your company continues to build? Like, have you thought of maybe in the future buying environmental pollution credits to offset or how have you thought about this as, look, the way I see this is you are not just a unicorn. You are a super unicorn. Thank so, you, Derek. Well, and so what, what I'm saying is, is the factory you have is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And what you don't want to do is solve one problem, such as cleaning up our ocean, and create another problem, such as dirtying um you know our, our our air with your factory so how do you think about that as as you uh, become that super unicorn so there uh we have just started our how can i say our journey here in mm -hmm. brazil we need to expand our business here before uh expanding abroad you know that yeah and we believe that in a few months we will have reasons to expand to united states and we will need to produce our products there and to expand to another countries. And uh, the challenge is uh, how we can improve this business around the world, okay? So we, we truly believe that we can put factories uh, around the world, produce among, the, among other products, the BioBlue Nut Absorber. But you said an important point. Um, the most relevant uh, products in our business aren't the, the products to solve the accidents, the environmental accidents. Mm -hmm. The most relevant products are the filtration systems to separate oil and water, to clean contaminated, contaminated water from oil. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, nowadays uh, we need to treat water with in a chemical process, you know, so we have a great opportunity to do this using a physical process because our product can recover uh, a very, very small amount of oil in water from for example, from the oil exploration process. You know, mm -hmm. when, we, uh, when we explore oil, when we have a um, platform, for example, from uh, of Chevron or another companies uh, such as Petrobras here in Brazil, we need to put water to, to, to insert insert oil water to, to to recover the oil from the earth or from the water from the sea for example and this water 
must be separated by uh, by the, separated from the oil in uh, how can I say a centrifuging process, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And after after this centrifuging process, the water comes with three, five, or seven percent of oil inside. So we can use our product to clean this water in a physical process. Because before our company, we need to use a chemical process to do this. Yep. And I think this will be uh, the best products and the best opportunity for our company to, 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 to be a unicorn. Of yep. course, we, sh we, we dream about this, but uh, I think we are a little bit far from that. You know? Yeah, so let me ask a question though. I think one of the challenges is, you know, for example, a lot, one of your big opportunities is in large oil spills. So you could sell um, materials to oil diggers around the world, not just the United States, but there's a lot of emerging market countries like India and China, which have historically um, really struggled with oil cleanup. And so what that really in, it requires is how do you make the materials either in Brazil or the US and then ship them out all over the world? Like, is there, how do you look at that challenge? That seems to be your most immediate challenge if, to, to become that unicorn. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree with you. And there's an important point about this. Uh, the heart of palm industry exists in different countries around the world, in Indonesia, in China, uh, and even in Florida, United States, you know? Really? Yeah. Yes. There are uh, heart of palm industries in Florida. And these factories are used to discard this biomass. So our challenge is to find the right investor, okay? Mm -hmm. To find uh, the right people uh, or the right person, sorry, the right person to walk with us on this challenge, to expand our business as fast as we can, putting factories uh, on these countries, to um, to supply our product to these uh, large oil companies, you are right. This is the the great challenge that you have that we have. Well, let me ask a question: Does the because you're using hearts of palms? Does is there like a um, does it go bad? Can it be stored for a long time? Or how yes. long can the material be good for? For years or? Our product can be uh, stored for many, many years because it's uh, a biopolymer. Okay. And after, treat after the treatment, after producing, we can store this product for many, many years. So you could fill, you could theoretically keep manufacturing in Brazil and the United States, and then you could ship uh, internationally. And yes. because it's not a technology, you shouldn't have very many challenges at customs other than you might have to explain that it's not food. But I think once yes. you could get past that, um, I don't think you, it's not like you're shipping electronic parts into China or internationally, which will get delayed. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me say something. Uh, I think that the great challenge of our company is to convince the large oil companies to adopt our technology mm -hmm. as the, the, the primary technology to lead or to deal with the environment accidents, okay? I think that the, uh, the large oil companies that are committed to ESGs, for example, we will, they will have 
uh, an opportunity using our product to be closer than uh, the E from the uh, ESGs, you know, from the uh, environment actions to preserve the planet. And I think that after the first company adopting our technology as the primary technology to lead with the environmental accidents, the other large oil companies will do the same. We yeah. will do the same, okay? This well, is the great challenge. I also, and this is, go ahead. And, and sorry, sorry, Derek. And this is the, the reason because we are focused on uh, for, for, that we are right now focused on to structure our business here in Brazil. But because we know that after uh, the first adopting process, the, uh, the first large oil company adopting our technology as the primary technology, we will have uh, a great opportunity to expand very, very fast, you know? Yeah. Sorry. No, I was going to say, um, as far as convincing the the oil companies, I think I think you're you're absolutely spot on. Um, I think what we you would want to do is look for strategic investors, probably like Shell Ventures or you know somebody that is an oil company that can help you. Uh, but that's the problem that with this. Yep. There's a problem with this because this company, uh, Total. Uh, was the first oil company interested in our company, okay? Mm -hmm. And they asked uh, an exclusivity for us. Mm. And I think it's not an option because we believe that this product should be used. No, uh, I agree. I don't think you would run it. I know the guys at Shell Ventures. I don't think you would run into an exclusivity problem with them. Um, I think they're more of, a peer venture capital firm that happens to invest for Shell, um, but they do want to provide returns. So yes. they would help you work with Shell, but I don't think that they would do that. I think another thing too would be to reach out to some of the environmental folks at the United Nations, because if you could start pushing some of this technology into some of the legislative talk, and some of the requirements for keeping our oceans clean, I think that would be really good too. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, hey, so I got one other thing I wanna show you. I know that you're um, kind of not ready to enter the US, but I wanna make sure that you know about this company in the United States. And I actually know them. Um, they're mobilefluid.com. And they focus on the separation of fluid. I'm not exactly sure what technology they use. Um, they're using some kind of landfill. And Amazing. They, yeah. And Amazing. They, they've worked with a lot of big companies um, in, in the United States. And they even worked on the... Um, the uh, BP oil spill. So oh, amazing. Yeah, I think you should uh, maybe write them down. And if you want to be connected to them, I can connect you. Uh, yeah, it could be a, a, re a great opportunity for us. But you know what's so good, in my opinion? I actually think it's better to not be the only one doing something because it makes it more real. And that market size you showed is so big that one company cannot capture it all. So I don't there, show this to uh, scare you or, or scare them, but I show you this to just say that, um, you know, hurry up and come to the US. Uh, we, we, and I we think- can, We can know, collaborate and work, work together. Yeah. I think that it's the, the, the best point uh, or the best opportunity for us, working together. This yeah. is the point. So yeah. If you want to be introduced to them, you can. Um, is there anything else around challenges that you have in scaling your company that we haven't talked about? Uh, sorry, I didn't 
more, is there any other challenges question. you have that I haven't asked you about that? What makes your comp, what keeps you up at night? What's the hardest thing about running BioSolvent? Uh, I think there are um, different challenges to start a business, especially here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. We need to find the right people uh, to help us. We need to, to have a great team and the funding process here in Brazil is very difficult too because um, because uh, Brazil is an expensive uh, country, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we usually pay uh, pretty well from, for the government investors, you know? And, yeah. to, and raising funds in a startup uh, use it to be a hard process, but fortunately, we we have just closed a deal here, and to improve here in Brazil, we are prepared, you know. But uh, as so, there you are know, some challenges around just working in Brazil and being in Brazil. It's just yeah. It, let me ask one other question about challenges that I think comes to my mind about being in brazil what about the currency conversion i mean do you have any international customers yet and are you converting that currency back to brazilian dollars like is that hard too it, it is it hard to you, it cuts into your profit when you yeah do that. it is hard to and we have a plan to internet internationalize our company uh creating international business by South North America, for example, mm -hmm. uh, to keep doing business in the United States and, and keeping the money in the United States, you know, and to improve in our company in the United, United States, for example, as fast as we can. Uh, but we have uh, international clients. Yes, we have. And uh, we can... We can we can, I don't know how to say that, but we can uh, back the money to, to Brazil sure. in an easy way, okay? Yeah. It's not difficult. Okay. Um, and then last question, as far as, you know, you said you had a million dollars in sales in 2019. Do you, it's okay if you don't, but do you have any metrics on how much oil you've been able to recover or reuse? Yes, we uh, this year 2020. It's a, a typical year, but we have helped our our clients to recover more than 800 uh, tons of oil. Wow! Only that's this incredible. year, yeah. Wow! It's a, a huge amount. And then one of the other challenges, so that's a number that can help convince oil companies. And one of the things that I also think might help convince, are you guys, where do you guys fall in how expensive you are compared to the competition? Are you less expensive, more expensive? Uh, uh, the costs to produce our product is less than the, the cost to produce this synthetic absorbers okay okay so we are a low cost product of course uh we need uh some costs to to send our product and to ship our product but uh, our technology is uh, less expensive than the competitors so if ship so what is your highest cost of goods like in the u.s we say cogs what is the highest cost of goods you have in, in, in providing sales? Is it shipping? Yes. So yes. if you localized, if you had a factory in the U.S., a factory in China, a factory in Indonesia, um, you could change the world. Yes, of course. Because, because of this, I said to you, our great challenge is to find the right person to walk with us. Mm -hmm. Because... Finding the right company or the right investors, we will have the opportunity to expand to these countries and to 
really changed the world. This is the point, Derek. And I, I must say, I will count on you to help us to do, to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. But um, one other thing. So what about India um, and the Persian Gulf? <laughs> How could we set up factories? What factories would be in the region of, because we can't forget about the Persian Gulf. There's just so much oil there. And there's, you know, U.S. companies there. There's, there's Persian company. There's uh, Arab Europeans countries. company there. That, I mean, it is the place where oil is. So where would the factory be to serve the Middle East? Could it be Israel? Does Israel have hearts of palms? They're yes, better. yes, of course. And, and an important point. They have an, a huge amount of palm trees there. They do. I've been to Dubai. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So and you, we have a great opportunity to be there because so you, they have the palm trees, they have the money, and they have the companies, and they have everything where we need to improve our business there. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's exciting. So you think there's enough palm we trees? We are just... Uh, there, ahead, I must say play. one thing for you. We yeah. have just starting our business. We, we uh, are really committed to create uh, a great and important company. This is just the beginning, you know? Of course, we will find, we will uh, work so hard to expand our business to MENA and to United States or to uh, all over the world, you know? Yeah, I mean, the Meta region is really exciting. Uh, I will say something to you. About two years ago, I couldn't speak just one word in English, just one word in a different language than Portuguese, you know? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I can speak Portuguese, I can speak English, of course, as you are, are, are saying. Uh, I can speak uh, Italian, I can speak Spanish, and I've been learning French to be able to talk with, uh, with people uh, all over the world about our business. And I know that we will have an opportunity to be a great company, a large company. And I'm, I've been preparing myself to be the right person to run this business, okay? This is the point. And I'm afraid about being the right person. And I've been preparing myself to be this right pe person to talk, to, to run my business, you know? You know what's amazing is investors bet on three things. They bet on companies, they bet on products, and they bet on incredible founders. And I, I just think you have the trifecta of all three, Guillermo. It's not a matter of if you become a unicorn, it's a matter of protecting you from getting bought too soon because you are gonna be an absolute incredible company. If there was such a word as a double or triple unicorn, that's what you, what you have here. God, and, bless, God bless your words. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, it's what's I think so great is, I mean, you're right up there with Tesla and SpaceX and the importance of the mission and what you're going to do for this world and for the life of, you know, my kids and their kids, um, but also what you're going to do uh, for the returns of your, your shareholders. And, and, you know, I think that's, that's, that's really in incredible. Um, so thank um, you, man. Thank you, and uh, I'm going to stop recording, and thank you for your time, and how could people find about Biosolvent if they watch this? Where would they go? Is there a website you want to just tell them? Yeah, 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 double, double, uh, double, 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 I don't know how to say, but biosolvent.com, okay? Uh, awesome, biosolvent.com. Biosolvent.com. That's amazing. We was born as biosolvent.com, not .com .br because we was born as an international company, okay? Yeah, that's what you're gonna be. Hang on. <laughs>